The incredible transformations of skyscrapers, the future of architecture. What are skyscrapers? Are they the future of architecture? Will they succeed in the future? A tall, continually inhabited building with several stories is referred to as a skyscraper. There's currently no agreed upon definition for skyscrapers, however, contemporary sources often stipulate that they must be at least 100 to 150 meters tall. Skyscrapers are extremely tall, high-rise structures. Welcome back to Grand Projects. In today's video, we'll be seeing the incredible transformation of skyscrapers. Before getting into the video, subscribe to our channel for more such amazing content. While Louis Sullivan's 41-meter-high Wainwright Building in St. Louis, Missouri in 1891 was the first steel-framed building with soaring vertical bands to emphasize the height of the building and is therefore considered to be the first early skyscraper, Burnham & Root's 45-meter Rand McNally Building in Chicago, 1889 was the first all-steel-framed skyscraper. The Italian Mole Antonelliana stood 167 meters tall in 1889. Near the end of the 19th century, the majority of the first skyscrapers appeared in the land-constrained cities of New York City and Chicago. There were a lot of early skyscrapers built in Melbourne, Australia between 1888 and 1891 as a result of a land boom, but none of them were steel reinforced, and today there aren't many left. Later, there were added height restrictions and fire regulations. Due to problems with existing structures, London's builders encountered restrictions on building heights in the late 1800s. In London, high-rise construction is prohibited in several locations if it would block protected views of St. Paul's Cathedral and other ancient structures. Skyscrapers of the modern era are constructed with steel or reinforced concrete frameworks and glass or polished stone curtain walls. They make use of mechanical devices like elevators and water pumps. According to the CTBUH, since the 1960s, the skyscraper has been reoriented away from being a representation of corporate dominance in North America and towards conveying a city's or country's position in the world. Like most other things, skyscrapers will likely get much more sophisticated robust to withstand natural disasters and other things, and taller. Offices will be more technologically equipped to ease the workday, and elevator technology will progress to allow for more effective trips. However, the significant development in skyscraper buildings was made possible by the Bessemer Processes Improvement, which was initially applied in the United States in the 1860s. Using a steel frame allowed for the construction of truly tall buildings because steel is stronger and lighter than iron. The first steel girder building was William LeBaron Jenny's 10-story Home Insurance Company building in Chicago. The curtain wall, an exterior layer of masonry or other material that solely supports its weight and is attached to and supported by the steel skeleton, was also initially used in Jenny's skyscrapers. Skyscrapers are made of a superstructure of columns and girders above the ground, a substructure of piers below it, and a curtain in between. Skyscraper design and decorating have gone through a number of stages. Buildings designed by Jenny and his student Louis Sullivan emphasize verticality with defined columns rising from the base to the cornice. Nonetheless, there was also some reversion to past styles and retention of them. The requirement for energy saving also had an impact on skyscraper design and construction in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. In mid-rise structures, movable windows and glass walls that were tinted to reflect the sun's rays have replaced sealed windows that in the past required constant forced air circulation or cooling, for example. The 1980s also saw the beginnings of a return to more classical ornamentation, as seen in Philip Johnson's AT&T building in New York City, possibly as a result to the international style's austerity. In order for skyscrapers to survive, workers must come back to the places where they were built. Although working from home in yoga pants has its benefits, not everyone wants to go back. There are underlying elemental factors that make a return necessary. Studies conducted prior to the pandemic showed that loneliness could increase mortality risks to levels comparable to smoking. Furthermore, magic happens when people work together, especially those who are creative. We now understand the value of remote work, but Moazami emphasized that teamwork still requires physical presence. 
In order to fill its empty skyscrapers, revive its economy, and strengthen its COVID-bruised national identity, China is fortifying its position. Following a series of earlier development judgments, the government announced broad height and design limits on new skyscrapers in 2020. In an unexpected move, they outlawed copycat structures, including Chinese versions of famous Western structures like the Kremlin and the Eiffel Tower. Bans were once more strengthened in July, this time targeting height. New structures greater than 500 meters were outlawed and those over 250 meters were heavily controlled. Most recently, China outlawed structures taller than 150 meters in areas with populations under 3 million. This has had an economic impact, especially on Western design firms that have constructed many of China's super tall buildings. Skyscrapers exude might, economic prowess, and technological prowess, attributes that nation builders find appealing. The pandemic has necessitated broader perspectives on tall structures and the people who occupy them, urging flexibility, adaptation, access to nature, and towers that preserve more energy and materials. There have been several wooden skyscraper designs created and constructed when Brock Commons, an 18-story wooden dorm at the University of British Columbia in Canada, was finished in September 2016, it surpassed the tree's record. According to estimates, wooden skyscrapers weigh about one-fourth as much as a comparable reinforced concrete construction while also having a 60 to 75 percent lower carbon footprint. Cross-laminated timber, which offers wooden structures more rigidity and strength, has been used in the design of buildings. Due to the prefabrication of CLT panels, construction time can be reduced. In most building designs, good structural design is crucial. Still, skyscrapers require it more than other types of structures because of their enormous cost and the possibility of even a modest catastrophic collapse. For civil engineers, this poses a paradox. The only way to guarantee a lack of failure is to test for all failure modes, both in the lab and in the real world. But learning from past failures is the only way to get familiar with all failure modes. Hence, no engineer can guarantee that a given structure will withstand all loads that could lead to failure. They can only ensure that there are sufficient margins of safety to make a failure tolerably rare. Engineers wonder if a building's failure was caused by a lack of maintenance when structures do fail. With that, we come to the middle of this clip. Hope this video gives some idea about what skyscrapers are and how they turn out to be the future of architecture. Nowadays, people prefer more of such buildings to the usual architectural style that we used to follow, and thus, there is a lot of support and motivation all around for these skyscrapers. For more of its details, watch the rest of this clip, but before that, subscribe to Grand Projects for more such amazing information. Skyscrapers have a large amount of mass, necessitating a more robust base than a shorter, lighter structure. The lifting of building materials to the top of a skyscraper during construction uses more energy than it would at lower elevations. A skyscraper uses a lot of electricity because it needs to pump both potable and non-potable water to the highest occupied floors. It is typically mechanically ventilated, elevators are typically used instead of stairs, and rooms far from from windows and windowless spaces like elevators, bathrooms, and stairwells require electric lighting. Skyscrapers can have artificial lighting and the energy needs can be met by renewable energy or other electrical sources that produce less greenhouse gas emissions. Skyscrapers can be efficiently heated and cooled thanks to centralized HVAC systems, windows that prevent heat radiation, and the tiny surface area of the building. Skyscrapers can earn leadership in energy and environmental design accreditation. Skyscrapers can be environmentally benign, as seen by the Empire State Building, which is the tallest LEED certified structure in the US, and got a gold LEED certification in September 2011. Another instance of an eco-friendly skyscraper is the 30 St. Mary Axe in London, United Kingdom. Skyscrapers are typically located in urban areas with high land costs. If the cost of land is so high that it makes sense to build higher to reduce the cost of land per square foot of a building, then building a skyscraper becomes reasonable. Hence, unless a building regulation regulates the height of buildings, the economics of skyscraper development determines where they are built in a large metropolis. 
Due to the crucial significance of high land prices for the construction of skyscrapers, they are uncommon in small cities and are a defining feature of large cities. Rental prices in the city center are typically only affordable to business, commercial, and hotel users. Because skyscrapers offer such a high ratio of rentable floor space per unit area of land, they are now a more frequent site in areas where land is expensive, such as in the middle of large cities. The loss of usable floor space caused by very tall skyscrapers results from the necessity of numerous elevator shafts for effective vertical transit. Due to this, express lifts and sky lobbies, where passengers can change to slower distribution lifts, were introduced. With that, we come to the close. If you enjoyed today's episode, like, share, and subscribe to our channel Grand Projects for more such content. Also, bang the bell icon for notifications. Watch other videos from our playlist too. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Bye!